Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to solve this equation by completing the square. So what we're going to want to do is we need to find the value of b in this equation. And to do that, previously when you've learned like linear equations, we always looked at, oh, well, we can simply just isolate the variable and get it by itself. Well, this comes to a problem because one, this is not linear because the, uh, the power for b is 2, is 2 up here. And also we have two of them which we cannot combine into one. Then we might want to look into factoring. You know, we always say, can we solve by factoring? So if I move this 9 over here and set this equal to 0, I try to see, is this factorable? And unfortunately, it is not factorable, so we cannot solve by factoring. You can also work into quadratic formula, and we can also work into completing the square, which is going to be very, very useful and helpful if you want to kind of look for a method that a lot of times is very, it's quicker than completing the quadratic formula. So here we go. We have b squared minus 8b equals 9. The first thing you want to do when completing the square is always make sure your coefficient of your uh, squared term is 1. All right. If it's not 1, you're going to have to factor out uh, that number and we'll work and you'll work at a different direction. But now we notice that this is a 1, so we're in, uh, we're in good standing so far, as we can say. So the next thing I need to do is I need to somehow get rid of my b squared, my b. I need to get these down to one b that I can solve for, right? Well, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, this is a quadratic, but I'm, if, you look at, if you think about a quadratic, I have ax squared plus bx plus c. What we're going to do is we're going to create a special c that's going to have us a perfect uh, square trinomial. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I talk about a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to create a special C that's going to give us a perfect square trinomial. And you'll see why we like the perfect square trinomials. So how do we find that perfect C? The first thing you're going to want to do is take B divided by 2 and then square it. So my B in this problem is negative 8. So I have negative 8 divided by 2 and then I square it. Negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I add 16 on both sides. So I have b squared minus 8b plus 16 equals 9 plus 16. Now, why do I have to add a 16 onto both sides? Well, let's go and take a look at, if I look at a regular um, linear equation, if you see this, I have 5 equals 5, correct? Well, remember, to keep an equation exactly the same, you would have to say 5 plus 1 equals 5 plus 1, right? So whatever you do on one side, you have to make sure you do on the other side. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Since I'm adding 16, I have to make sure I add 16 on the other side. Now, why do I want to add 16? Why, why is this 16 so special? Why is this b divided by 2 so special? Because now, if you look at this trinomial, all right. It's a perfect square trinomial, meaning that I can rewrite this as b minus 4 squared. I can now write this as a binomial squared. And what's so helpful about writing a trinomial as a binomial squared is now I've eliminated the square term with this variable. And I've created now taking two of my variables and down into one. I still have the square. But it's not directly related to this one variable. Well, it is, but I, now I at least have eliminated my two variables, which is helpful because you look over here, 9 plus 16 is 25. So now we can solve this by using the square root property. To solve this from here, I'll take the square root on both sides. The square root of squared are inverse properties. Those will cancel out, cancel each other out. They're inverse operations. So b minus 4 equals the square root of 25. Make sure when you introduce the square root that you include the, uh, um, the positive and negative value. So that means I'm going to have plus or minus 5. Now to solve for my b, I'll add 4 to both sides. And I got b equals positive 5 plus 4, which is 9. And b also equals negative 5 plus 4, which is negative 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve an equation by completing the square. Thanks.